Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Griffin here. And today we're going to be diving into the ins and outs of the investment strategy that I personally use in my investment portfolio that's shown some pretty good and consistent gains over the last while. And what's best about the strategy that I'm going to be sharing is that it requires no prior skill or knowledge about the stock market or investing. And it's been proven to be one of the easiest, highest earning and safest long-term investment strategies that you can utilize in your own portfolio without trying to beat the stock market if you were to handpick your own stocks. Now from the title of the video, I know you already have a general idea of what this strategy is gonna be, but I'm talking about building an investment portfolio around ETFs that track broad market indexes. And the reason why I love this strategy so much is because I, like many of you watching, wanted to start getting into investing my own money in the stock market, but without having to constantly pick my own stocks, stay on top of news releases, quarterly earnings reports, and basically anything that would take away from other aspects of my life or projects that I'm working on, that will generate me even more income that I can just reinvest back into this core strategy that I use in my investment portfolio. So this strategy is something that you can set up in a matter of minutes with your online bank or any other online stockbroker and only requires about 10 to 15 minutes per week in maintenance. And I genuinely believe in this investment strategy. It's something I've been using for quite some time now and plan on using it for the decades to come due to its ease of maintenance and high returns. Because the reality is that even for most professional investors and hedge funds that are actively trying to beat the market year after year, this has been proven to be extremely difficult. And for the average investor like you and I, beating the market is something that's really difficult. So it's a lot more strategic for investors to just put their money in broad market ETFs that will grow with the market and you don't even have to think about it. So first off, let's start by covering what even is an index fund and why should you care? So an index fund is essentially a pool of multiple different investments that usually try to mimic a market. Now, when you buy into this ETF, you're essentially owning a fraction of all the investments within that fund. And the real beauty in owning a fraction of multiple different investments within a fund is that the fluctuations of your capital invested inside of this fund is not solely dependent on the fluctuations of one single company or bond, but rather a smoothed out average of the entirety of all the different investment vehicles within that fund. So here's a really quick example to showcase the power of an index fund. If you were to buy one single piece of land, you would be subjected to all the fluctuations, positive and negative, of the value of that piece of land. Now on the flip side, if you were to buy into an index fund that had a certain percentage of a thousand pieces of land, you're gonna be exposed to the fluctuation of the thousand pieces of land, but most likely it's gonna be smoothed out to a positive average. So then what would be the best way to shelter yourself within the stock market from fluctuations in one single investment vehicle? Well, you guessed it, it's with index funds. And don't worry, for those of you that really wanna invest in a certain market or industry, there's index funds for practically any single industry that you would wanna invest in. Want exposure to the S&P 500, for example? You can get exposure to the entire S&P 500 for the low price of 68.65 if you invest in Vanguard's VFD ETF. Or say you would want exposure to the entire broad cannabis industry. Well, this can be achieved for 21.78 if you invest in Horizon's HMMJ ETF. And hey, what about bonds? Are there index funds that track short or long-term company and government bonds? You guessed it again, for $25.58, you can invest in bonds with Vanguard's aggregate bond index ETF. The point I'm really trying to drive home here is that there are index funds for every single market and industry that you would want to invest in, and you don't have to constantly be picking and choosing your own stocks and being glued to your phone looking at that stock app, being stressed out about the short-term fluctuations of your investments. Now, why are index funds so awesome compared to mutual funds? And what is the main point of difference between both of them? Well, it starts with the management fees for index funds that happen to be much lower than the management fees for mutual funds. For most index funds, depending on the nature of the assets within the fund, the management fees are usually going to hover between 0.08% and all the way up to about 0.5% on average. In comparison to this, the average mutual fund usually charges a management fee of between 0.5% all the way to about two or 3%, which can have a significant impact on your long-term financial gains. The reason why index funds can charge much lower management fees is because building and maintaining an index fund does not require nearly as much overhead expenses and management expenses in contrast to a mutual fund, for example, that has to employ multiple different people that are buying and selling stocks throughout the year and trying to beat the market. 
Instead, the savings on this 2% management fee is passed on to the investor, which is you. So you're essentially buying into a portfolio of stocks or bonds that's constantly being rebalanced for you to mimic the goal of the fund without ever having to think about it or pay people ungodly fees to do so, which is exactly what a mutual fund is. Mutual funds employ professional stock pickers to buy and sell stocks throughout the year in order to try and beat the market as we've already covered. However, someone has to pay these professional stock pickers and that person happens to be you with higher fees. And newsflash, most of the time professional stock pickers and mutual funds happen to not even beat the stock market, which is their primary goal. In fact, if you were to invest in an S&P 500 index, you would have on average a higher performance compared to putting your funds into actively managed funds such as mutual funds. And Warren Buffett, one of if not the most successful investor of all time, stated in an interview that the average investor should not try to time the market and beat the market but rather use index funds as their main investment vehicle, buying on a continuous basis regardless of the price. So over the long term, Warren Buffett believes that the average investor like you and I are most likely going to come out ahead if we were to just put our money into ETFs rather than trying to beat the market ourselves or putting your money into mutual funds. The second main advantage of an index fund is its diversification. So instead of buying into one single stock that could potentially lose significant value in the short term, if you were to buy into the NASDAQ 100 ETF, for example, offered by Horizon, you would be exposed to the entirety of the 100 stocks in that fund. Even if 10 of the stocks within the NASDAQ 100 were to take a significant hit in the short term, chances are you're most likely going to be safe because the 90 other stocks within this fund are balancing out your returns. And with a long-term outlook on investing, you're not going to be bothered by the short-term fluctuations of your investments because essentially you're betting that the NASDAQ 100 is going to go up in value in the long term. And for the average investor, this is going to be a lot more beneficial in the short and long term, not only because of the consistent financial gains, but also because of the lowered stress factor of just putting your money into these funds and knowing that over the long term, your money is going to go up in value. You don't have to be stressed out about really short term fluctuations in specific companies. Most people, including myself, can have a really hard time seeing their capital fluctuate in the short term. So it's better to just put your money into an ETF with a long-term strategy and just basically forgetting about it and just purchasing those same ETFs over and over throughout the course of your investment career. And if you stick with this investment strategy for the long term, you're going to be going through some bear and bull markets, but undoubtedly you're going to come out on top because of dollar cost averaging. The next really attractive thing about index funds and buying them through ETFs is the ease and simplicity of building and maintaining your portfolio. I realized quite some time ago that investing my money in the stock market is really of interest to me. However, simply put, I don't want to spend my time researching different different stocks, looking at quarterly earnings reports and essentially trying to beat the market. I wanted a surefire way of putting my money continuously into certain different investment vehicles and having that money grow over time without even having to think about it. And above all of that, I realized that I'm an amateur investor. I'm not a professional investor. I don't want to pick and choose stocks on a continuous basis. I just want a way that I can put my money into some different ETFs on a consistent basis and have that money grow over time. Now on the flip side though, investing in index funds is not going to yield you 2 to 300% gains like you could have seen a couple years back investing in marijuana stocks for example, but nonetheless investing in those types of investments comes with a lot more risk that most people just simply do not want to be exposed to or just cannot bear the amount of stress related to constantly checking the value of your investments. So now that we've covered what an index fund even is and why you should utilize them in your own portfolio, let's take a look at how you can start building your own ETF portfolio in the coming steps. As a Canadian myself, all the different index funds that we're going to be covering in today's video are traded on the TSX, most of them being offered through Vanguard or Horizon, which are companies that basically manage and build index funds. However, all the funds that we're going to be talking about in today's video are also available in the United States under different names, but nonetheless, they're essentially the same index funds that will track the same investments. So first off, I like to keep the percentage of my portfolio in stocks at roughly 80 to 90% of the entire portfolio value divided in the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, as well as in an index that covers the entire American stock market. And the reason why I keep the percentage of my portfolio so high in stocks is because I'm a pretty young investor and I have a long-term outlook on my investment strategy. So I know I'm going to go through some bear and bull markets, but nonetheless, I want to keep most of my money in stocks so that I can see the highest potential gains over the long run. 
The index funds that I personally use are Vanguard's VFV ETF for the S&P 500, as well as Horizon's HXQ ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100. However, each company offers a variety of different ETF that cover different aspects of the US stock market, as you can see here. Moving into the next category, which is international stock market, I like to keep my portfolio percentage in this category at around 10% in order to get a little bit exposed to what's going on in the global markets. The index fund that I use for the international stock market is Vanguard's VEE. Finally, roughly 20% of my portfolio value is in fixed equity assets invested in Vanguard's VAB ETF. Once again, the reason why I have so much capital in my portfolio tied up in stocks is because I'm relatively young and I see a long-term outlook on investing in the stock market. Though I know I'm gonna go through ups and downs in the market, but over the long run, I'll more than likely come out ahead than if I had the majority of my money tied up in fixed equity like bond indexes. However, if you're closer to retirement or have a much lower tolerance to seeing your money fluctuate up and down throughout the years, you'll most likely wanna have a higher percentage of your portfolio tied up in fixed equity. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you decide to go through with this investment strategy, building an index fund portfolio, then obviously you can tailor each category to your particular situation. I highly encourage you to buy three to five different ETFs that you continuously purchase in the different weight categories for your particular situation, but don't even worry about what the price is in the present moment. Just continue buying over the course of the coming years. Reason being is you're gonna benefit from dollar cost averaging, which basically means that you're gonna be purchasing the stock price at various different prices, but over the long run, it's gonna average out to a positive for you. Every single stockbroker is gonna give you the possibility to buy ETFs, whether it's with your bank or an other online stock brokerage. I actually made a video right here that you can check out about my top five online stockbrokers so I highly recommend that you check it out if you haven't already started investing and you want to open your own portfolio as of today. I also highly encourage you to use a TFSA account to purchase all your investment vehicles in if you haven't already. The reason why I recommend a TFSA is because this is a registered account that is post tax dollars meaning that all the money that you invest into this account will grow tax free over the long run. So I really hope this gave you a new perspective on how you can invest in the stock market. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I talk about a ton of different personal finance topics and on that note, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon.